Good morning. Father, in Jesus' name, we come to you, God, just to say thank you on this morning, God. We don't take it for lightly, God. You woke us up to another day that was not promised to us, oh God. Father God, you have made a way out of no way, oh God. Father God, in the midst of so much pain and so much sorrow, God, you managed, God, to find a way to bring us comfort and joy. Father God, we know that your word said that you would not leave us comfortless. So we thank you, Lord, for the Holy Spirit. That is our comforter in our time of need, in our time of sorrow, oh God, in a time of despair. The Holy Spirit's job is to comfort us, and it does just fine at doing that, oh God. And Father God, you said, oh God, that the joy of the Lord is our strength. You said in your word, God, that in the presence of the Lord, we would find joy. So so Father God, I pray, oh God, that the spirit of joy will reign throughout our nation, oh God. And I pray, God, that everybody that don't know you, God, will get to know you before it's everlasting too late, oh God. Father God, you told us over in Psalms 1611 that in thy presence is the fullness of joy. You told us in Romans 15, 13, that the may the God of here. God of here, fill you with joy and peace as you overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. So we thank you, O oh God, for the Holy Spirit. We thank you, O oh God, for being that comforter, God. Father God, there is so much going on in our lives personally. There is so much going on in the world today, O oh God. But we know, God, that no matter how much goes on or how big our problems seem that they're never too big for you because you are bigger than any problem that we could ever face, oh God. Father God, we pray for comfort for those that are uh, facing bereavement on today, oh God. Sister Marie, oh God, we pray for her family, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. And we pray for that nephew, oh God, that cousin, oh God, that stabbed his death, dad to death, oh God. Father God, we know that there are so many people that are hurting from mental illnesses, oh God, and it seems to go unspoken, oh God, and it seems sometimes to come to the forefront, oh God, when there's tragic, oh God. So we're praying, oh God, that those that are in authority that are that are licensed uh, clinicians, oh God, that are able, oh God, that went to school, oh God, that, that you even have ordained, oh God, to seek out these problems, oh God. We pray, God, that they will be on point, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. And we pray for those that are having mental challenges, oh God, that they will get the help that they need, oh God. Because Lord God, yes, what he did was tragic, oh God. But Lord God, I just believe in my heart that if he knew better, he wouldn't have done it, oh God. Because we know, God, that devil comes at our minds, oh God. So we're asking you, oh God, to have mercy on him, oh God. Regulate his mind and his thoughts, oh God. Because I know, God, when at the end of the day, when it's all over, God, he has to live with the fact of what he did, oh God. And nobody wakes up in the morning with the thought, oh God, that I'm going to do something like that. So, Lord God, give us an ear to hear what you have to say as it regards to those who have mental illnesses before we pass judgment on them, oh God. Lord God, it could have been one of us. It could have been one of our family members, oh God. Father God, we just don't know. Only you know what goes on in our minds and our thoughts, oh God. And I pray for everybody that don't know you, God, that they would get to know you before it's everlasting too late. And that they would spend time with you, oh God, because in your presence, not only is there the fullness of joy, there is comfort, there is deliverance, there is healing, there is salvation. Father God, in your presence, there are so many things, God, that we as believers and non-believers can, can benefit from. Because Lord God, if a non-believer gets in your presence, they gonna get saved because one plants, one waters, but it's you who gives the increase, God. So Lord God, my heart goes out to that young man, oh God, because we don't know who in our family may have mental challenges, oh God. We just don't know. People go through life with mental challenges without being diagnosed, oh God, because long back in the day, oh God, African-Americans, we just weren't getting diagnosed with that. And it's not that we didn't have it. We just wasn't getting it taken care of. So I pray that the young man, Marie's cousin, oh God, would get the help that he needs. 
And I pray, God, that you will continue to comfort the family, oh God, and strengthen them, oh God, and show yourself strong, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Father God, we know that you're able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could even think or ask according to the power that worketh in us. So Father, you've given us the power to tread on the serpents and scorpions head. So let us operate. Let us allow you to allow us to operate in what you've already given us. Lord, if you don't really do anything else for us, you have done so much, God. You have done so much for us to be thankful for, God. As I look back over my life, and I'm sure everybody on this call can look back over their lives, you brought us through some things, God, that we thought we were going to lose our minds. But had it not been for you on our side, God, we may not even be here today. So I'm forever grateful, oh God, just for your presence, for allowing me to come into your presence. I'm grateful, oh God, that you saved me for such a time as this, oh God. And I thank you, oh God, for loving us, oh God, enough of, of us, oh God, to just want to, to allow us to just spend time with you, oh God. To spend time with you, oh God. You could have chose anybody else to do what you chose us to do but you chose us, God. So thank you, God, for seeing things in us that we didn't even know that were there. Thank you, oh God, for allowing us, oh God, to come to your presence. Thank you, oh God, for allowing us with the job, with the charge, oh God, to stand in the gap for other people. When sometimes we don't even feel like standing in the gap for ourselves. So we thank you, oh God, that we have a Reverend Yvette, oh God, a Pastor Yvette, oh God, that comes to us, oh God, and just enlightens our hearts, oh God. She encourages us, oh God, to be encouragement to others. So we encourage her on today, oh God. I pray for her and her son Carrington on today, oh God. I pray, God, that you will continue to watch over them and protect them, oh God, and to strengthen them and to shield them individually and collectively with your precious blood from the crown of their heads to the sole of their feet, and that no weapon formed against them shall prosper. And Lord God, we thank you for Pastor Meeks, oh God, and First Lady Jamel, oh God. We thank you for the shepherd of the house that you placed us under, oh God. We thank you, oh God, for the love and compassion that our pastor and our First Lady has for the men and women of God and for people, period, oh God. For people, period, oh God. I remember when I came to Salem, oh God. My mom had passed when I was 19 years old and Reverend Meeks had all of the altar gill up at the front of the church. And he said, some of you guys haven't had a hug from your mothers in years. And he had us to come up, oh God. And I got a hug from teacher Juanita. I'll never remember God, never forget it, God. And I said to myself, I knew this was the church that God wanted me to be at. Because it was then and there, oh God, and I've been there since, oh God, and I'm grateful, oh God, and I thank you for our church, oh God, and I thank you for how all what it does in the community, oh God, for the city of Chicago, oh God, we're our, our pastor is a pillar, oh God, not just in the city, but in the state, God, so we thank you for his life, oh God, we thank you, oh God, he gives you the glory, oh God, we thank you, oh God, that he doesn't take what you give him to do lightly, Reverend Yvette doesn't take what she do, what you give her to do lightly, the prayer and assessors, we don't take what you give us to do lightly, oh God, we're grateful, oh God, we're grateful on today, oh God, we're grateful, oh God, to be able to have a church that we haven't missed the beat, God, and we're grateful to you, oh God. We say to God be the glory. We don't take credit for none of this, oh God, because it all belongs to you because without you, God, we wouldn't even be here ourselves, oh God. So we don't take it for, great, for granted, oh God. We pray for our Pam in Ohio, oh God. She's asking for strength and encouragement, oh God. And Lord God, I'm reminded of David, oh God. He had to encourage himself. So Sister Pam, I just want to say when you're feeling a little low, I just pray that God will give you a song down in your spirit. He would give you a song that you would bring, he would bring back to remembrance. The Holy Spirit, which is your comforter, can bring back to remembrance a song that, that God gave, had given you that would just encourage you to a point of no relief. And I pray, oh God, that you will continue to let her know, oh God, that the joy of the Lord is her strength. And for those of us that may be feeling a little weary today, a little tired today, spend some time with God. 
because the joy of the Lord is our strength. And in the presence of God, there is a fullness of joy. So in God's presence, we're going to get whatever we need to make it throughout this day. Amen. And we're going to pray for those who have, who suffered loss along with Sister Maria, oh God. And uh, Lorel is asking for prayer for some that she know who has suffered loss and need healing, oh God. Lord God, it's a time, the pandemic is still going on. None of us thought that this would still be going on this long. But God, we can only see down the street, but our God sees around the corner. So God, we thank you that you have us covered. And we pray for those that have lost loved ones because of COVID, oh God. And we pray, God, that you will continue for those who have COVID, continue to comfort and strengthen them, oh God. And we plead the blood of Jesus over their immune systems and their respiratory systems. And we just pray that you breathe a breath of fresh air into their lungs, oh God, in the name of Jesus. And we pray for Sherry, who's in the hospital, oh God. You know the situation, God. The antibiotics that they give, had given her are not working. We're asking you, oh God, to cleanse out her blood, oh God, to cleanse out her system, oh God. We're asking you, oh God, to be that doctor and that nurse, oh God. We're asking you, oh God, to intervene on her behalf, oh God. And we pray for everybody that's not feeling 100%, that may be going through health challenges, be it cancer, diabetes, uh, high blood pressure, heart problems, uh, just not feeling 100%, just not feeling like we're and able to give God all that he's due. I'm asking you, oh God, to regulate our minds and our thoughts, oh God, and regulate all of our vital signs, oh God, and strengthen us, oh God, and give us the ear to hear what you have to say, oh God, and because your word said that you were wounded for all of our transgressions and you were bruised for all of our iniquities and that our chest has and a peace is upon you and it is with your stripes that we're all healed. So I pray, oh God, that we would just know God as a this uh, psalm has dropped the spirit in my heart, oh God, that is, uh, it hasn't happened yet. Doesn't mean that it's not going to happen. Our prayers, God's promises to us as believers are yes and amen. And just because you haven't seen your prayer manifested, it does not mean that it's not going to happen. It just means that it hasn't happened yet. So we have to trust and believe God because God is not a man that he should lie nor the son of man that he has to repent. So it just hasn't happened yet. So we can hold on to God's unchanging hand because our prayer request hasn't happened yet. Now, if we're praying the will and the way of God, it might just not have happened yet. Now, if you're praying something that ain't from God, guess what? It probably won't happen. But we have to trust and believe God because after all, God knows what's best for all of us. And we're going to continue to pray, <coughs> excuse me, for encouragement for Jackie and everybody that needs to be encouraged. We have to learn to encourage ourselves. Find you some blood washed Christian friends that's going to help build you up and not tear you down. We can have a pity party for a second. But after that second, I'm going to be like, come on, sisters. Come on, come on, come on. And one of the things that we can offer people that's free is prayer. Prayer don't cost us nothing. It actually gets us closer to God because it's conversation with God. So just be mindful that anytime we need anything, God has it. He has no problem giving it to us. And he loves us just, just that much. We're going to pray for... Elijah and Emmanuel to find an apartment to live until they go into the Navy and the Air Force. So we're going to pray that God will bless them with a place that is feasible for him to continue to minister to them, to regulate their minds and their thoughts before they go into the Navy and the Air Force. And I pray for everybody on this call that we have family members that don't know God as his, their Lord and personal savior, I pray that the spirit of salvation will reign throughout our families, as well as throughout our nations and our communities. And I pray that God will give us the right words to say, that we will speak to our family members with the spirit of love and compassion, comfort and joy, that they too may come to know this savior that we brag about, this savior that we love, our God, 
because our God is awesome. He is Jehovah Jireh, our provider. He's Jehovah Rapha, our healer. He's Jehovah Nisi, our banner of protection. He is Jehovah Shalom, our God of peace. So when you need some peace, know that that is God. When you're operating in the spirit of chaos, know that that's not God. We're praying, oh God, that for Sandra's son, nephew Floyd, as I like to call him, that he would uh, keep you first, God, that he would continue to seek thee first the kingdom of God and your righteousness and all other things will be added to his life, oh God. Lead and guide him in the right direction, oh God. And I pray for Adrian's eyes to stay focused, oh God. I pray, oh God, that you would continue to lead and guide her in the right direction. Open up her eyes of her spiritual eyes and ears of understanding, oh God. Allow her to see clearly, oh God, in the name of Jesus. We pray for Sheena to find a uh, direction, to find a smooth sail of her condo and a new place to live, God. We know you're able, God. Have your way today, God. Be glorified, oh God. We pray, God, that you would just show up and show out in all of our lives. We pray as we open up our phones, open up our mics, that you would be glorified in the heavens and the earth. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you,